He is a good man and great at his job. That he is. And so Falsey and I have decided we're going to conduct a brief but hopefully poignant sit-down interview with Bob on his 40 years. Bob, if you could comply by giving somewhat short answers, that would help make us uh, happy. But that's fine. I work in television. Brevity is the soul of wit. You must get on with it. A good story has a good beginning and a good end as long as they're close together. Here we go. Our guest today is Bob Pompiani. My fellow interviewer is a man named Falsey. <laughs> Coltsy. Matt Cole. <laughs> we each have questions for Bob. This is Barbara Walters style interviewing. Falsey, you go first. All right, Bob. I'll start you off with it might be an easy one, uh, depending. But what would you deem as your favorite assignment over all of these mm. 40 years? Well, there are a lot of them, you know, so I would obviously when you get a chance to cover Super Bowls and Stanley Cup championships and even baseball, we had access down in 1991, 90, 91, 92, when Jim Leland and his team was going at it down in Atlanta. One of my favorite stories is I was, the games back then were not on uh, a lot of cable. So we had CBS had the broadcast rights for that. So we had game seven. Pirates Braves in Atlanta, which meant we followed it up with a post game show. My job was to be in a pirate locker room, and I was excited because they took a two nothing lead to the ninth inning, only to see it fall apart. And I was in there, no televisions in the monitor in the locker room like they are today. All the champagnes in the pirate locker room, and I hear a guy say, "Move the champagne, go to the Braves." And wow. I had no idea what was going on because I was in, I was waiting to do what I did, and I no, I missed all of it, but I heard all about it, and then I went back and saw all of it. But to try to do interviews in that situation is not easy to do. Mm -mm. But of all people, Stan Belinda was the most thoughtful. He did an interview. He was the guy on the mound during all of this. But that was that was interesting. My answer would be covering the Nagano Olympics in 1992, 1998, uh, because all the Penguins were there, and it was the Czech Republic that won with Yarmir Yager and Marty Straka and Robert Lang and who else was on that? Yuri, Yuri Slager. Slager. All of those guys. That was fun. I've never done it before. That was the first time, and I enjoyed that immensely. Wonderful question, Folsey. Thank you. I don't know if it's professional to compliment your question in a sit-down interview like this, yeah, but sure I really it thought it was nice. Thank you. <laughs> Next question, Bob. I remember Mike Lang telling me, and I used this as a story in a book I did about the Penguins. He told me that he once gave on-air condolences to the family of a man who was not yet deceased, and the man was watching from his hospital bed. And Mike said, from that point on, I had a rule. I had to see them laid out before I gave on-air condolences. So I'm wondering for you, <laughs> did you ever have an on-air screw-up, anything major from your 40 years at KDK? Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if I could repeat it. Okay. Just because I, I've said it, and it was accidental when I said it. And okay. I, I, and I can't repeat Just a it. general bad word that you Well, it was a combination said. of things. I'll give you an example of okay. what I was saying. Yes. I was trying to figure out how to describe a running back. This is doing a uh, a long time ago, a Steeler preseason game. He, yeah. You know, he did yeah, yeah. second half, whatever. I, he was doing great things, and I was trying to think in my mind with a very elusive runner. You know, he couldn't figure out how to tackle him, cutting back. And I had a couple of things in my head. Uh, what's elusive? I thought dreams are elusive because you can never remember your dream. And the other thing I thought were wet fish were elusive. And somehow I combined the two, and that's what I said after a 25-yard game. Oh, my <laughs> He's God. as elusive as <laughs> – Oh, my God. And I had no idea I even did it. Folsey, you'll have to dig up oh, that clip. Oh, wow. You won't be able to find that clip. Was that bet. years and years ago, I'm assuming? It was like 22 years ago. Oh, yes, I will, Bob. I know yeah. people. <laughs> and they don't call me the savvy old news hound for nothing. Folsey, you're up. Bob, you would often do shows, and still do shows, where you take callers live on air, on TV. Mm. First of all, do you enjoy those shows? And secondly, how do you keep your composure when somebody comes on there and just says something totally off the wall? He snuck in a two-part question, Bob, he did, didn't he? Um, yeah, that's a I little enjoy it. I, I always do enjoy it. I think it's uh, – and I love talking to people, so that's not that's never a problem. But you do get some, especially after Steeler games. Like Chris Hoke and I now – I used to be Edmund Nelson. We, t we do two hours, and we have a whole hour of calls. And when there's a loss and when people are angry and they've mixed some alcohol in there, that's never a good combination. Right. So you do get some things. Well, when you're on TV, you know, you don't want to – and 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 our station is good about this. We do not like to go on and turn it into something bad, you know, in terms of back and forth negative stuff. So, I mean, you just respond accordingly, and the best I know how, 
without offending too many people and move on. There have been some unbelievable moments. You of, watch of those. Unedited yeah. oh. questions that get in there before. When you first went on with these types of shows, was there any delay? And, and has it gone from no delay to how many seconds? No delay to now seven. No delay it's must risky. have led to some Well, there were a lot of FCC moments. situations going on there. You know, you, you gotta, you're you responsible for what goes on the air. Were you ever able to laugh in the midst of one of those? Or was it, was it oh, always I, a moment of panic? When we have delays, you laugh. Yes. Panic sets in when there's no delay. <laughs> <laughs> Panic also sets in when you feel obligated to answer a question, but you know that it's a risky answer that you're about to give. Yes. And so panic goes through your head. Know those little people that are on your shoulder all day like today? Yeah. The devil and the angel? Yeah, yeah. Those come into play in those situations. You've joined the formal Bob Pompiani interview upon <laughs> 40 years. They're going to celebrate this uh, in early July at KDK. 40 years on the air. Uh, interview conducted by Folsey and myself. I snuck in an, an addition question on top of yours. May I now go with my original question, Folsey, or do you object? You may. You may proceed. Bob, your best friend, your very best friend in the news business mm. is who or was who over oh. these 40 years? This was one that's, of my questions. That's a too. tough one because I've had so many. I mean, I, I, I really like value all the working relationships uh, that I've had over the years. I don't know if I can answer that hmm. because I have a lot of them, I, and I still enjoy. Who are some of them? <laughs> Name um, a few, or well, do you not want to offend day, no, anybody? No, no, no. I'm gonna. It's not a case of offending. I don't, I'm not trying to do that. But like when I first started, John Sanders, who was on KDK at the time, uh, became good friends with his. Used to go to his house a lot. I was young, just getting into this business, trying to learn from him, and I always appreciated his style. And you remember him, don't you? He did play by play for the Pirates. Went yes. to Cleveland. Um, I always enjoyed that. Ken Meese was another guy. Uh, in fact, I'm a godfather of one of his sons. Mm -hmm. He was in Pittsburgh for a long time. Uh, Patrice King Brown, always one of my favorites. And I still talk to her rather routinely, even though she's out of the business. I mean, I can go on and on. I learned a lot from Ray Tannehill. Ray was one of the best at um, and not just what he did, but we used to have a place next door called Murphy's Parlor in between 6 and 11. He'd go in and get a couple of scotches. He was better after two scotches than I could ever have been without one. <laughs> you know, just smooth as silk. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, stuff like that. Um, current day, there's so many. You know, uh, Rich, who works with me now, Rich Walsh. Um, and, and I classify them as friendships. Jared Barton, Craig McConnell, Steve Bank, all these guys that I work with now. Jory Rand. Jory Rand, back in the day. And he went out to L.A., got into news. Now I see he's going back into sports a little bit, so I'm happy about that because I know that's where his love is. But, I mean, I can go on and on. Ballsy? Bob, I know that the business has changed over the years, and so the question of has the business changed maybe not <laughs> is not the greatest. But how – what's the biggest way, I guess, you've seen the business change over the years? Uh, the, the biggest way is that I think in television there's so many avenues – um, that you can choose to get information and things. You don't need to. It, there was a time when, you know, the only things were on the air were CBS, ABC, NBC, and that's it. There was no cable. So the bigger piece of the pie for advertising reasons and everything else. So uh, I think when people wanted to watch or learn something, they had to watch. They had no other choice. You'd get the newspaper the next day, recap what you already knew, and even that was important because you got more details. But for in television, that was something you had to do if you heard about something tragic happening in downtown pittsburgh some chances are with no cell phones or anything else you had to watch the 11 o'clock news to find out what it was and that has all changed so now we have to be in at least in sports more local than we've ever been we used to do a lot of more national stuff now it's all local all the time with the exception of major stories like a deshaun watson that interlaps you know with um local pittsburgh stuff but so to me um it's just it's more difficult to get an audience because there's so many ways people can find their, their news. My final question, Bob, I learned a long time ago when I started doing the showdown with you on KDKA, and I think the first one I ever did was during a Devil's Penguin series in the late 90s, that you could go on the air and it's all in TV from the waist up so I could go in wearing gym shorts as long as I had, you know, a suit jacket on, things like that. Right. I'm curious if you've ever done a show – in gym shorts or just your underwear or perhaps naked? 
You're going into the Ron Cook uh, nude be beach, nude studio. Uh, definitely shorts, all the time shorts. Never naked. All the time. All the time shorts? All the, in the summertime, yeah. Especially in the summertime. So every time we see you on TV, you're, you have a suit jacket but shorts under well, the desk. Well, like on Sunday night now, we have full length. We're back showdown in the studio. Which, right. By the way, you should be on the showdown, and you continue to deny me this. Nah, I'm yeah. too tired. But now it's all that. full. You know, you can't. It's full shot, so you got to you yeah. got to be dressed up. But no, normally, um, like for example, tonight, chances are I'll have just a pair of shorts on and dress up top. Every now and then you get a you can get a smart Alec camera operator who will pan over and give you some yeah. idea that I'm in. <laughs> and then you get people. Well, who cares? I mean, it doesn't matter. Folsey, do you have a final question? Here? I do have a final question, if I may. Mm -hmm. Bob, do you do your own makeup? Yes, I never used to. Now I do. They, really? That's one thing that we don't have anymore. People who do it have to do it themselves. I'm not good at it. Some days I wonder if I look like Tammy Faye Baker because I overdo it with everything. I mean, because I think more is better. More is actually not good. Less is better. So when you want to get rid of the, like those things under your eyes, you know, I told you I, I didn't go to sleep last night until 3 in the morning. I can't mm. fall asleep. I wake up with that look, you know, Joe. Have you ever worn concealer? I don't know. Somebody over there used to put me in makeup for uh -huh. the show. Did you like I forget it? what her name was. Lori Walker Geiger. Lori Walker. Yeah. That's who it was. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I mean, it made me look better. That was a good thing. So have you ever decided, I look better, therefore I'll do it on my own when I no, go out? I no, I never. You never, never did? Never thought of that, no. No. Well, sometimes that happens. Folsey, should we give Bob a hand, or how should we end this? Uh, you, I uh, have been to a nude beach <laughs> twice, as a matter of fact. <laughs> That's the best way to end it, right there. Yes. Coming oh, up, and Bob, my. in all honesty, and I know I speak for Folsey as well, uh, congratulations, yes. man! Forty yeah, years on you. the air is incredible, I and you've done it. Yeah, I'm, you've done it with done, class. Oh, you're very kind. I just try to be me and just try to have fun with this as best I can. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you.